Hello everyone and welcome to Amherst Fort. And welcome back to TMT Go Dutch. I'm Travis. I'm Tracy. And Tracy, what are we going to be doing today? Oh, I have so much planned for us. She always does. <laughs> got a little bit of art, a little bit of history. I got to be honest though, what were your first impressions coming out of the station? So we walked kind of towards the old part of town from the, the centrum, st yeah. from the station and the st area by the station does not look very special considering that we've heard that this is supposed to be one of the most beautiful cities. It's medieval roots, but modern architecture, I think. So it was very modern, kind of industrial around where the station was. Yep. But as we got closer into the centrum, we've been pleasantly surprised. So I'm keeping an open mind here. Fair enough. What should we do first, Tracy? As always, we are going to go find a local cafe to have some coffee at awesome um we're going to a place called livingstone coffee so let's uh let's get caffeinated up for our day today all right let's go Okay, now that we've had coffee and we've walked through the city, my opinion's completely changed. Yeah, I am very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yeah, it's a really, really pretty city. Once Charming you get in, as heck, yeah. Even this behind us, this is the Schort Canal, the Kortgracht. Kortgracht. And it looks really cute. The whole area is really cute. We walked by one of the churches. If you have the chance and you're in Amersfoort and you're looking for a good cup of coffee, Livingstone Coffee is it. It's delicious. That was really, really good. The lady was super nice. They have a couple of weird chairs inside. Like that a, look like airplane? It looks like it was from an airplane. Yeah, it's pretty it was... neat. Um, right now, though, we are headed to a place that celebrates one of Amersfoort's most uh, notable residents. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go. We'll take you along with us. Yeah, let's go.
So as we said before, we were uh, going to visit one of the places where one of the most notable residents of Amherst Fort lived, and that's the Mondrian House, Pete Mondrian. Mm -hmm. uh, he was born March 7th, uh, 17? No, I'm sorry, 1872. 18. Um, oh, what a cool, cool museum. I have to say there that a lot of the art was not what I was expecting because he's known for his more abstract Cubist, stuff. Cubist, mm -hmm. yeah. But the audio visual installations, there was two of them, were Breathtaking. amazing. Breathtaking. They were so great. They're very well done. Um, inside, you can find uh, his, a recreation of his studio in Paris, which mm. was really neat to walk through. Um, like you said, the audio visual, just incredible. What was your favorite thing about it? My favorite thing was kind of learning how his style evolved over the years. And also that he had a kind of a uh, fascination with Snow White, Disney Snow White. After the movie came out, him and his brother were apparently obsessed with it and called each other nicknames. I think it was Sneezy and Dopey. Dopey. Yeah. <laughs> you had an interesting observation about the colors. Oh, yeah. In some of his Cubist art, works of art, he uses red and yellow and blue, blue. In, in the Disney movie, Snow White. That Those are the colors of her dress. So um, I wonder if one inspired the other. But yeah. pretty fascinating. Um, what was your favorite part? Oh, I don't know. I love that it's on the museum cart. <laughs> yeah. It is a lot bigger than I expected. Mm. I was not expecting anything like that. It was definitely very dense. There was a lot of little pathways and stuff. It was very cool. I think one of my favorite things was learning about the different facets of his personality. Um, and the fact he listened to jazz while he painted. And that really inspired him. Um, but he was sometimes known as a recluse who would not leave his studio. And other times he was a uh, very, very, social. very social, enjoying the company of many women. So yeah, pretty, pretty fascinating. And he was kind of, you know, hated by the Nazis because they didn't like his art. And he spent time in Amsterdam, Paris, and then ultimately the end of his life in New York. So mm -hmm. he lived quite a life. Yeah. Are you ready for the next one? All right, let's go. Just had a late breakfast, early lunch, a brunch, a brunch, if you will. yeah, at uh, the blueberry. The blueberry, yeah, it was lovely. Um, just make sure you book at the right location. There's a few we booked the wrong one, but they were able to take us anyways. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Super cute inside, very American-ish. <laughs> yeah, uh, the art was really fun in there. I, th I thought their food was good. My latte was delicious. I think you totally out ordered me on the food. Yeah, I had a apple pie French toast that was really, really good. Super lacquer. I had a Caesar salad sandwich, which was just okay, honestly. I think I should have gone for... Sweet. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of cakes and brownies and stuff downstairs that looked pretty good as well. So if you're in the area and you're looking for something sweet, I would recommend it. Right on the main square um, where the market is going on. So we may take a wander through there as well. Cool. Where are we headed next? It's a surprise. Let's go. Let's go. Tracy, we're here? <laughs> yeah. Where's here? Um, we're at the Ons Leave Vlautoren, or the Church of Our Dear Lady, or okay. Tower of Our Dear Lady. Um, it is supposedly one of the largest uh, towers in the Netherlands. I imagine Dom Tower in Utrecht is probably bigger, though. That, I don't know. We'll, we'll fact check that and put that for you. Um, it's big. Uh, yeah, you can go up to the top for a price. I don't know if we're going to do that today because it's quite windy. Um, but you can go ahead and peek inside. Um, it is no longer an active church, and we'll kind of explain that a little bit later. Um, but, yeah, you can go ahead and take a peek. Apparently, it's used as an event venue. Um, so let's go check it out. All right, let's go. So 
So this thing has a whole bunch of history along with it, right? It does. There actually used to be a church um, that was somewhat attached to it. Um, unfortunately, in the 18th century, gunpowder was stored um, here and uh, caused a massive explosion, destroying the church, but the tower still stands. You know, I seem to realize there's a lot of stories of gunpowder exploding in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. So, <sighs> oops. Kind of sad. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, the fact that the tower is still standing is pretty incredible. Yeah. Tracy, you said this is the center point of the Netherlands? Well, it was when it was built. Um, and when you go into the tower, there's actually a little hole in the floor with a laser light that points to where the middle of the Netherlands was thought to be. And from that point, um, the Dutch grid system was implemented. And that turned into what we now know as GPS. And so if you've used your smartphone to navigate somewhere or you've been on a flight that used GPS, which is all of them, you can kind of thank this tower for it. It sort of started the pioneer of the early GPS system. So all in all, pretty cool. That is neat. Tracy, what time is it? It's time for an Amersfoort fact. <laughs> Hit us with an Amersfoort fact. <laughs> so uh, Amersfoort has roots uh back to the Mesolithic period, um, which is 10,000 BC to 8,000 BC, um, the time of hunters and gatherers. And there have actually been remnants of those types of camps found. Wow. Really neat. That's a good fact. Tracy, do you know what time it is? It's time for another Amersfoort fact. Hit me. Okay. So even though it has Amersfoort has roots in the Mesolithic area, it wasn't actually granted city rights until 1259. Okay. And the fortifications of Amersfoort um, were along the canal system here. That makes sense. Canals are good for keeping people out. Sure are. And speaking of keeping people out. The next thing we're going to go do is going to be part of the defense system that was here. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Chrissy, where are we? We are at the Koppel Fort. And what is that? <laughs> so it's from the 14th century, and it was a water and road gate um, used as a fortification uh, for Emmersfort. Fun fact, the Koppel Fort was never breached. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. It's a really, really neat uh, piece of architecture. So let's go look around it a little more and on to the next. Luke. There is one thing here in Amersfoort we wanted to do, but we can't today. No, and that was to visit Camp Amersfoort, um, which technically isn't in Amersfoort. It's in a town outside called Lausden. Um, and it's now a memorial center, but it was once a prison uh, camp for about 47,000 prisoners, including 220 Americans and 2,500 Jewish people. Most of the prisoners were uh, political prisoners. Hmm. Huh. I mean, it's kind of hard to go see things like those because it's a bit harrowing, but it is important. Yeah, I think it's very important to educate ourselves a little bit, although it may be hard for us to experience. It's, it knowledge is power, and yeah, so we'll have to plan uh, to visit that not on a Saturday because we're filming on a Saturday and they're not open. So. Uh -huh. Just a few steps away from one of Amersfoort's notable residents, Mondrian, is another notable resident, and that is this gentleman right here. 
<laughs> Johan van Oldenbarnveldt. Um, and he is very important because he was one of the founders of the Dutch East India Company, the VOC. The biggest organization that ever existed in the world. Yeah, and he was a really kind big, of important. He was a really big advocate for Dutch independence too. So um, the Nurhausen in general is just a beautiful circular street. It's probably the prettiest street we've seen in Amersfoort. And it was uh, the old like city wall that was right outside the canal. Uh, right inside the canal and then they turned it into these houses mm -hmm. and it's really pretty there's some beautiful houses we pass along the way here They're also unique as well they're all a little bit different and they all have a bit of character um, it's really really lovely mm -hmm. so in the 1600s there were certain products that made Amersfoort very very rich and that was wool tobacco and beer which is interesting because our next destination is going to be uh, one of the many craft breweries here That was Rock City Brewery. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. This place definitely gives me some like Austin, some Portland, Portland vibes. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely a little hipstery, but in a very chill way. And quite a bit outside the centrum. Yeah. With that, Tracy, what was your favorite? Well, we got to taste ten different beers, which was pretty great. Mm -hmm. There was a maple coconut stout. Mm -hmm. It was like as dark as Guinness. It was delicious. How about you? There was one that was called the Ariba. I like that one quite a bit. Yeah, it was like a dark brown ale. Yeah, it tasted like uh, toasted. toasted oats. Yeah, it was really good. Really tasty. Um, they do have food here as mm -hmm. well. Um, it's not super busy here today, but they have like a terrace. And yeah, it's, it's a really fun place to hang out. It's definitely a very cool vibe. Yeah. Tracy, what were your thoughts on Amersfoort as a whole? Okay, so... I was uh, pretty concerned when we first got out of the station, honestly. Um, but yes. I think the moral of the story is don't judge a book by its cover. Especially not the first five minutes that you have to walk away from the, from the station. But it, it definitely grew on me. I could see where the old city was. And it was nice to get out of the old city a little bit and to the, where people live within this area. Yeah, very compact feeling. And it was pretty easy to see what we wanted to see. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's things we missed, so let us know in the comments. 